And our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. From The Cure for Sorrow, A Book of Blessings for Times of Grief, comes this poem by Jan Richardson. It's called Blessing of Hope. So may we know the hope that is not just for someday, but for this day, here, now, in this moment that opens to us. Hope not made of wishes, but of substance. Hope made of sinew and muscle and bone. Hope that has breath and a beating heart. Hope that will not keep quiet or be polite. Hope that knows how to holler when it's called for. Hope that knows how to sing when there seems little cause. Hope that raises us from the dead. Not someday, but this day, every day, again and again and again. End of poem. One of the gifts of faith in Jesus Christ is gritty, get your hands dirty, sacrificial, showing up, love embodied hope. It's like prayer. We live into our prayers. We, we live into our hope. We don't, you know, we don't just sit waiting for God to do, for the world to do. We do. Believing that all things are possible if it is God's will. Hope has everything to do that with believing that our actions, no matter how small, make a difference that God can do amazing, miraculous things through the faithful acts of even one person. The angel Gabriel visited Mary. Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary lived in Nazareth. Nazareth was a podunk town. Uh, it's like being from a place where people ask you where you're from and you, and you say the next big city. You know, I'm, I'm from close to, because you'll never have heard of Nazareth. Uh, population, they guessed, between 100 and 400 people, poor, agricultural, agricultural. So there were farmers, there were shepherds, laborers who probably walked an hour to the next big city to sell their goods or to sell their services. Nazareth, for the, the name for it in Hebrew, probably comes from the word netzer, meaning branch or shoot. So sometimes when a, when a tree is cut down, a branch or a shoot will grow out of that stump. That's a netzer, uh, which is going to make us all jump to where? Isaiah, right? We read it. A shoot shall come up from the stump of Jesse. Now, Jesse was David, King David's father. Um, and the Messiah was supposed to be born from, the descendant of, from a descendant of David. Gospel of Matthew, does that genealogy at the beginning, making it clear that Jesus is the descendant of David. Right? A shoot shall come from the stump of Jesse, and a branch, Netzer, 
shall grow out of it, it, his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. So what good can come out of Nazareth, which is a question posed in the Gospel of John? Well, Jesus, our Savior, was conceived in Nazareth, a shoot, a branch, a bearer of hope for a weary world. Now, Mary uh, was probably, we're guessing, about 13 years old when she was uh, engaged to be married. Very common for that day because you know, people only lived into their 30s. So as soon as a girl got her period, she was married off. Uh, and they prayed and they prayed that she would have a lot of babies and that she lived through all of those pregnancies, right? The engagement process would take about a year. Why? They, they would get engaged and then wouldn't get married until a year later because they wanted to make sure that the babies came from the husband. To get pregnant out of wedlock meant being killed, stoned to death. And we jump to Deuteronomy chapter 22. If there is a young woman, a virgin already engaged to be married, and a man meets her in the town and lies with her, you shall bring both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The young woman, because she did not cry for help in the town, and the man, because he violated his neighbor's wife. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. So what is being asked of Mary could get her killed. And for the first time this year, it jumped out at me. It stood out that Mary gave her consent. She says, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And I'm so glad it's there. Um, I think it's a sign of the times with all the Me Too stuff that dredged up so much for, for women. And there's no way to do justice to, to, to that topic. But I just want to say that it hit me for the first time. Mary said yes. It wasn't, this is what's going to happen to you, whether you like it or not. She says, let it be for me according to your word. Um, I don't, and this next question I'm going to ask, I don't think this is my idea. I think I heard this from someone else years ago, but it makes you wonder whether Gabriel didn't make other stops first. <laughs> right? We're, they're, they're, she, Mary was not the only young, faithful woman in the world and could he, you know, but was she the first to say yes? Now, Catholics, or if you're born Catholic, you're in a hard time with that question. And just, let me just say, it's a mental exercise, it's conjecture, right? Uh, Catholics believe in the Immaculate Conception, which Protestants, we get that wrong. We think that they're referring to Jesus. They're not they're refer referring to Mary, that Mary was conceived and born without sin. We do not believe this, but we do think Mary, Mary is pretty spectacular. It meant sacrifice on her part. Every little girl wants to play Mary in the Christmas play, right? But who would actually want to be Mary in real life? Socially ostracized at best, isolated. It could mean your death. And she must have swallowed hard when she said, I am your servant. Let it be for me as you wish. But she answered the call. God has different calls on each of our lives. Some are easy. Uh, some are, are ones to which we have to swallow hard. Say, okay, Lord, okay. But, you know, be with me. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you can think of times in your life where you have just been so daunted by something. And the only way that you could take a step forward was with that promise, I am with you. The Spirit uh, whispered this week. I, write, I sit down to write my sermons on, on Fridays. And so I was, he had everything in front of me and I it was you know, collecting my thoughts to sit down and, and write. And it occurred to me you know, that I hadn't done my daily devotion in the morning, which I, I don't always, I confess. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to be wrestling with scripture. Do I really need to? And then I thought, you know, maybe that's the spirit telling me that there's going to be something in that devotional and maybe I should open it. And guess what? There was this prayer. Lord, make it so that we would rather choose death than partake in evils against humanity. Make it so we would rather risk our reputation and security than deny your call to work for freedom for the oppressed. Amen. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's Mary. That was Mary's choice. She chose death, loss of reputation and security. 
for a child whose name means one who saves. God helps, God delivers, God saves. What also jumps out in this story is how ordinary everything was. Nazareth is a podunk town. Mary is a humble girl. Jesus was actually a common name of the time. And yet extraordinary things would come out of these ordinary circumstances and people. Nothing is impossible with God. And what's also interesting, there's some debate about whether the angel Gabriel came to her in her home or whether it was by a stream of water, by living water. And if you go to Nazareth, there are two holy sites commemorating both of those places or churches in both of those places. And again, God can show up anywhere in ordinary circumstances, work through anyone and still does. It's a lesson for God's children of any age. So you and me, ordinary folks, there is a call on your life, on all of our lives, to let God use us to bring hope to a weary world. It's accomplished each and every day by people willing to say yes to God. And it's not usually you know, great feats of extraordinary whatever. It's usually ordinary things, small things that we can do, small acts done in great love. I was thinking you know, last week, all the food that miraculously showed up in the back to, to give to people for Thanksgiving or the Operation Christmas shoe boxes that, that you all put together and the Sunday school put together or planting bulbs uh, in, in fall. Uh, it's, to me, it's such a miracle and it's such an act of hope uh, if, that you believe um, that it's a lesson that creation teaches us. It's small things, but it's also sacrificial things at times as well, to risk reputation, to risk life and limb if you believe the spirit is calling you to it. Hope is one of the gifts of faith and we get to unwrap it, praise God, but we also get to offer it to one another, praise God, by showing them we care. And that's the sacrificial part. And it's not always easy. And yet, God is with us, and that makes the, all the difference. That's hope. That's what we wish everyone could know. On this first Sunday of Advent, when we remember that Christ has come and is coming, the yet and the not yet, we lift up the call of hope and its claim on our lives and how we live into them, and we also lift up Mary ordinary and extraordinary by the grace of God, who is willing to give her life so that we might know hope. May our, may our voices resound with hers. I am your servant. Let it be with me according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen.